Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people truly believe that they can do what they want, when they want, and nobody in the world matters. And in this episode, Opie tells a story about the time she was at a store and a Karen decides to attack her for joyriding a mobility scooter. And spoiler alerts, Opie is freaking disabled. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories, don't shake your heads too hard today, and as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here, let's go. Recently, I was talking with some coworkers about old jobs we had, and I remembered this gem. I remember this story vividly because it was so absurd. It happened on January 1st, 2017. I was 23 years old at the time, and I was in the middle of my shift at the grocery store as a checkout clerk. I was just chatting with customers as I rang up their chips, sodas, and rotisserie chickens like any usual day, when all of a sudden, a stalker ran up behind me and yelled, How busy is everyone? Confused, I simply gestured to my line of people, but he had our attention since he never did anything like that. My manager says, Why do you ask? Is everything okay? That's when he tells us, once you're finished with your current customers, everyone needs to leave. There's a fire in the back. Immediately, all who are not being checked out abandon their carts and they left the building. Except for one person who we'll call Gerald, the Karen of the story. Gerald was the next person in my line and he was going to be served, fire or not. The customer before him paid and quickly rushed out, and I grabbed my jacket from under the counter so I could evacuate with everyone else. Gerald, however, was not having it. The guy starts screaming at me saying, Hey, you will not leave until you have rung up my groceries. I say to him, Sir, there's a fire. We have to get out of here. It's for both of our safeties. The door is over there. Let's hurry. However, it seemed that today was not Gerald's day and I was in the wrong person's way at the wrong time. Gerald says to me, I don't care if there's a fire. I don't care if the store crumbles. I need these items, so ring them up right now. Like, the guy was really threatening me to ring up his seven items while smoke was filling the aisles. Since it was seven items, no manager was in sight, and I wasn't really feeling like getting a black eye, I began scanning his items, all the while he's screaming at me to hurry up, quite condescendingly as he could see the smoke filling the store. That's when my manager showed back up, to make sure everyone had left, and I ran over to her and said, Hey, please help me, this guy won't let me leave. My manager says, What, what do you mean he won't let you leave? Did you tell him about the fire? I say to her, he said he doesn't care. And that's when my manager says, Oh my god. Absolutely not. OP, you go outside with everyone else and wait for the firefighters. I'll take care of this. I went to grab my things again, and while I was leaving, I could hear both of them yelling. Gerald was screaming, Where the heck is she going? She has to finish. I'm a customer. I can hear my manager say, Sir, there's a fire. A fire. You have to leave. Meanwhile, the man kept arguing and said, No, I still have to pay for these items. It's at that point, my manager who's had enough said, You've got to be kidding me. I'm a manager. You can have it. It's free. Just get out of here. The guy then screams, This is terrible customer service. I'm never coming back. I met up with the rest of the staff in the parking lot, and they asked me what took me so long. So of course, I told them. My manager came out and confirmed the story. We never did see Gerald again. And about the fire, it was actually pretty contained on its own. It was in a closed off area in the back of the store. We were able to get back to work after it was put out. Starting with putting back all the abandoned carts full of food. Oh my goodness guys, this is the perfect example of how some people truly don't care about anything as long as they get what they want or need. Uh, sir, there's smoke filling up the store, we gotta go. The guy was probably like, uh, I don't see flames, we got time, ring up my stuff. And honestly, OP should have just left the guy. Don't bother with those customers when there's clearly an emergency. You have to save yourself. And listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think Gerald has any idea what terrible customer service actually is. Because again, the manager gave him his stuff for free. And in my eyes, I would call that excellent customer service. So, I had to take a flight home this weekend unexpectedly because my dad suffered a stroke. I spent the entire weekend deep cleaning the house slash meal prepping for my mom and then having quality time with my dad when they eventually discharged him. By the time my flight came back around, I was emotionally and physically exhausted. I had managed an aisle seat on booking the ticket and assumed the two blocked out seats next to me would be a couple. And boy was I wrong. 
The seats next to me were occupied by two kids. They were elementary age, and their parents sat together in the seats behind them, so they could sit together as a couple. These kids whined the entire flight and fought. They made crude jokes, used electronics without headphones, and on top of that, they fidgeted in their seats, wrestled each other, and they were loud. It was also a late evening flight, so I was hoping to get a nap in or close my eyes before my fiancé picked me up. However, even with my noise-canceling headset on, I got no sleep due to them yelling or their arms and legs hitting me hard during their wrestling. The parents behind them said absolutely nothing, and the kids were definitely old enough to know better. I looked back at the parents once during the two and a half hour flight, and I asked them if they could please quiet down their kids. At that, they shot me a bad look, said, let kids be kids, laughed at me, and then went back to drinking. And that wasn't even the worst part. Due to a few factors, like our ages, my engagement ring was on, all of us sitting were together in a row, and them having the same hair, color, and skin tone as mine, everyone near us assumed that they were my kids, even the crew. I was asked so many times to quiet down my kids, please, and I got so many bad looks and comments around me for how loud I was letting them be. And some people can't control their own kids, but I don't even have kids. Their parents were behind us drinking seltzer, and I was getting flack for their poor parenting. I did get one last comment from a woman on the way off the plane saying, I didn't see you once try to control your kids. If you can't control them, don't take them on planes. And at that, I was so mad. So on top of an emotionally charged weekend, I not only did not get to rest and relax on my flight back, but I also got flack for kids that aren't mine. I probably could have said more, but I was mentally exhausted and zoned out. Guys, I am absolutely speechless at the entitlement of these parents. And I'm pretty sure they knew exactly what they were doing. Let's fly and enjoy ourselves without parenting our kids. In my opinion, OP should have been way more vocal and asked the flight attendant to swap out one of the kids for one of the parents. I would have broken that little honeymoon crap show right up, guys. And let me know how many of you would have loudly made it clear that those kids did not belong to you because I would have. There is no way I'd let random people loudly judge me for two and a half hours. I would have been like, oh, those goblins beside me. Yeah, those kids are not mine. They belong to the irresponsible parents behind me. So I never really thought of this event as an entitled people kind of story, so I didn't think to share it before. But the event has been on my mind more recently, as I'm coming up on it a year later, so I might as well share it. As I've said, this happened almost one year ago. I had had a very invasive surgery, and I was handling recovery pretty well, but I was still restricted on a lot of things. The surgery was a hysterectomy, and being where the surgery was located, I could easily hide the scars with an overshirt, which is what I was doing. I was able to walk pretty decently, but I was also dealing with a lot of side effects of hormone changes because of the procedure. Some of the effects involved waking up with my legs covered in painful bruises and fainting spells that led to an ER visit. If these problems didn't flare up, I would look completely normal on the outside. This was a couple of weeks into my healing, and my mother had asked me to walk to the store and pick up our prescriptions after work. I was heading that way anyway, so I veered off and just walked into the store. Now walking there was fine, but as I entered, I realized that my body was starting to develop some pain. There were still bruises on my legs, and my abdomen was aching. It was going to be a quick visit, but not a visit I wanted to feel pain for. So I checked the electronic cart scooters, and I found one that had some charge to it. It was my first time ever having to use one, so I was already feeling pretty awkward and embarrassed. I thought I'd just get it over with quickly and leave. Now, a thing you have to know is I wasn't visibly handicapped. But in my states, I was pretty much temporarily disabled, and I'm not a large person. I'm also very young. I'm only in my early 20s, so I probably get how it looked to a lot of people, but most didn't ask about it or cared. I knew some people looked at me curiously, but I kept telling myself, hey, I'm healing from an intense surgery, and I have the right to use a mobility assistance device. I'm not being a jerk right now, and I'll be quick anyway. Along the way, I passed one of the food aisles, and I stopped to consider getting the family some dinner for the night. I mean, I was already at the store anyway, I just wanted to get the spaghetti and go. The pack I wanted was just out of reach, so I picked myself up, stood for a few moments to grab it, and then sat back down. 
that seemed to have caught the attention of the kid in the aisle, with his mom and grandmother, I think. I heard the kid say something along the lines of, Hey, look, she's driving a cart. I want to drive a cart too, urging the mom to look. The mom ignored me at first, and the grandmother seemed entirely uninterested. But the kid kept pushing for her to look again, screaming that he wants a scooter too. And that's when the mother finally did, after she put something in her basket. The way she looked at me was a mix of confusion and disgust. The look that basically screamed, what the F are you doing? Followed by her saying, what are you doing? I did try to turn away and pretend I didn't see her, but it became very difficult when she approached me. The Karen comes up to me and says, excuse me, are you allowed to use that cart? I don't think so. I replied, uh, yeah, I think so. They're available to take from the front for anyone who needs them. It's at that, Karen looks me up and down, trying to see something wrong with me. And she said, you, specifically? You know they're not for joyriding, right? People actually need this. I reply, yes, I know, I need one right now. It's at that point, Karen says, well, I don't see anything wrong with you. You need to stop joking around, get up, and put it away. I am sick and tired of kids like you thinking that you could use a disability advice because your feet hurt. How lazy are you? What if she needed it? Gesturing to the grandma, she then goes on and says, and what if she couldn't use it because someone like you is playing with it? You are an idiot. It's at this point I tried to defend myself and said, I know what you mean, but I'm not. I really do need it. I had a surgery and I'm in a lot of pain right now. Karen then says, if you had a surgery, then why aren't you at home? Do you think I believe that? I say to her, uh, I have a job and I can't be at home for weeks at a time. I need to do some shopping too. Karen says, no, what you need to do is you need to get up. And that's when she goes to pull my arm, hard. And the moment she grabbed me, I instinctively ripped myself backward, and this caused me to hit against the shelf behind me. But that didn't hurt as much as the sudden jerking movement caused against my incisions. She clearly got even more angry at the refusal, and she goes to grab me again. Again, I reeled back, only for her to get a hold on me the third time. I remember her child saying something at this point, but I don't clearly remember what it was. The kid was very upset, not being able to ride the scooter, but I was too preoccupied to notice or recall it. The situation was escalating into a sort of yelling match. On this day though, I had an angel watching over me. When I was in high school, I made friends with someone and he was an employee there. We visit the store all the time so we can see him, even choosing to use the store pharmacy instead of a pharmacy center. He rushes over, and before him or even I said anything, this random woman was already letting go to turn to my friend, and she starts spouting a bunch of nonsense about me being an entitled brat, saying her elderly mother was needing the cart, and saying I'm what's wrong with this world. Of course, with all the shouting, way more people were trying to be nosy and peek in on the situation. My friend basically says, what's going on? I tell him, I'm just trying to do some shopping and pick up something from the pharmacy. I just got off work and I want to go home. My friend basically says, all right, I'll talk to you later then. I'll handle this. Enjoy your dinner. At that, Karen says, What? Why are you letting her get away with that? What makes you think this is okay? I say to her, I told you, I need this. My friend tells Karen, Yeah, she's my friend, and she just had surgery recently. Karen says, And? I don't see any proof. What was the surgery? I saw her standing. That cart is for handicapped people only, not for young kids to joyride. At this point, I really didn't know what to do. While the lady was talking, I just pulled out my phone to send a text to my mom to come to the store and pick me up. We lived five minutes away, so it was a short drive. I was also considering showing my surgery scars, but I wasn't comfortable lifting my shirt like that. And that's when I remembered my legs. Since my legs were this sore, I could be sure that my bruises probably made an appearance. I lifted up my pant leg to check, and sure enough, my legs were covered in very small but very thick bruises, looking a lot like spots. I say to her, look at this, this is a side effect of my surgery. Karen looks at it and says, what is that? I say to her, my legs right now are covered in very painful bruises due to the surgery, and I worked all day and then walked here. Karen scoffs and says, well that sounds like a damn lie, I've never heard of a surgery that does that. She then went silent for a moment and then looked at me and said, Well, you said you walked here, so clearly you don't need the scooter. 
What would your parents think about this behavior? My friend tries to get her to leave me alone, or he'll have to call his boss, because I have a right to the carts. And at that, Karen says, Fine, get your boss, I'm not moving. This is what's wrong with the world. You are what's wrong with this world. From there, he pulls out a radio to page someone, and the entire time, Karen's muttering very cruel things about me under her breath. And that's the moment my mom shows up. It wasn't exactly hard to find us, as we were standing near the entrance by the end caps. The moment she stepped up and saw us, she flew into protective mode. My mom screams at her and says, What's going on? Why are you bothering my daughter? Karen says to her, Is this your kid? She's been extremely disrespectful. And she's stealing the electric scooters from people that need them. My mom tells her, What gives you the right to harass anyone for using these scooters? I asked her to come here, and if her incisions are hurting, why is it your business? Karen says to my mother, What it looks like to me is another entitled millennial getting handed everything, and now she thinks she can take from the disabled. She's not disabled. My mother tells her, Well, she had surgery a few weeks ago, and she's still trying to walk normally again, so yes, I do believe she needs it right now. That's when my mother directs me to leave and to pick up our pills, and she would handle the situation for me. I was almost near tears, and in some incredible pain, even more than before, but I did what she said. The grandmother did move aside when I directed the cart forward. The entire time, the child was quiet as well, and just watched the situation like it was a show. Once they were out of sight, and I was in the pharmacy line, I lifted up my shirt to see how I was doing. Sadly, a stitch did pop, but it was only leaking fluid, no blood. I got the pills and waited until my mother rejoined me. I basically asked what happened with her. My mom told me the manager had to de-escalate, but it's all right now. He told her it's not up to anyone to decide who's impaired enough, basically. If you're having issues, that's what they're there for. She got pissed off and she tried to start up another fight, but he wasn't having it. I didn't see her as I was leaving, and my mom did help me walk to the car. At the time, I didn't think it was an entitled story, as she was nowhere near as insane as some other parents here. I still don't know who she was, and I've never seen her again at the store. Before I was healed, I went to the store a few more times, but I never touched the carts again. That was way too scary for my nerves. I just grabbed what I needed, left with no pit stops, and I used benches if I needed to rest. Why am I not surprised that a Karen polices mobility scooters, right? To where it actually traumatized OP to the point where they'll never use another scooter again. Like, who is she to tell someone that they can or can't be on a mobility scooter? And guys, I know it's an obvious thing to say, but people should not just jump to conclusions just because something isn't so obvious. Like, just because someone doesn't look like they're in pain doesn't mean they aren't in pain, Karen. Like, that interaction should have only taken a minute at most. I would have been like, mind your business, lady. I need this cart. And I would have been out of there, guys. Like, if she has an issue, let her find a manager. And what I've learned from reading a lot of these stories is do not entertain people like this. Say as little as you can and get out of there. This person says, the minute she touched you, you should have filed assault charges. Even if the charges meant nothing in the end, the interaction with cops and the possibility of being let out of the store or led away in handcuffs in front of her mother and kid could have worked wonders on her attitude. In her mind, she probably thinks she taught you some lesson. Alright, so I'm a 31-year-old female, and my mother-in-law and I don't have a close relationship. She's civil towards me, but she can be a bit passive-aggressive at times, and we tend to disagree oftentimes. With that said, we live in a different state, and father-in-law passed away suddenly, and mother-in-law told me and my husband to come attend the funeral. She booked our tickets to fly to her state. But the issue started when my husband told me that we couldn't sit together in the plane, because his mom had booked him a first-class ticket while I got economy, and I was flabbergasted by this. I tried asking him why, but he urged me to suck it up and we'll talk about it later. In that moment, that particular moment, I felt so much humiliation and contempt. I felt like she was treating me as less than, even in this hard time. I decided to not go and just go back home. At that, my husband was shocked by my decision to go home and he tried to convince me to just go, but I declined. He went alone, and I ended up missing the funeral. He was livid, calling me, texting me nasty things, calling me petty, spoiled, and entitled. He said that I should be grateful his mom even paid for my ticket to begin with, and then said that she doesn't owe me a damn thing. I argued how she could have just booked us both in economy if money was an issue, but she clearly dislikes me, and she did that on purpose. He then called me pathetic for thinking about it when his dad just died. 
He said it was cruel what I did and that his mom and family will never forget that I missed the funeral over these ridiculous reasons. So am I the a-hole for going home over this? Edit. So one of the reasons I didn't settle for the economy ticket was because I wanted to sit next to my husband and support him. He sobbed the whole ride to the airport and I didn't want to leave his side. I was shocked when he told me we couldn't sit together and how he said it, like he had no issues with it. Yeah, so I do believe that OP is the slight a-hole in this one, guys, especially when she came back with the edit. Like, her husband cried the whole time to the airport, and she wanted to support him and not leave his side, but then she decides to leave him over a seat. But yeah, everyone does kind of suck. Like, the mother-in-law is an a-hole, and her actions were uncalled for and petty. But again, OP made her husband go to his father's funeral without the support of his wife, and she did this over a first-class seat. And a lot of people did say that there was nothing stopping the husband from saying, Oh, this is the economy seat my mom booked you and since you feel it's unfair, let's see if someone in economy wants to trade seats with me, so I can sit beside you. And I think that would have been the best thing in that situation, but like, you have to understand that when you deal with something like that, where you're hysterical with emotions, your brain is scattered all over the place. You're a mess, so maybe he didn't think about that. All we know is that OP played right into evil mother-in-law's hands and probably caused some irreparable damage to the relationship. Holy cow, was that ever a weird move mother-in-law pulled. This person comments, I hate the edit. If she really didn't want to abandon him, she would not have made him go alone to the funeral. She's a liar and an a-hole. And this person says, for real, if this was like a holiday or graduation, I would think it was fine for OP to stay home, but her partner just lost his father. Is now really the time to take a stand? Like her mother-in-law was an a-hole, but abandoning her husband in his darkest hour was not the answer, and I agree with that one, guys. And last comment, this person says, This is a tough one, but I'm going with everyone sucks here. Your mother-in-law was petty and juvenile, but your husband's father just died. This was about him, not you. And the fact that neither yourself or mother-in-law could put your crap aside for a situation like that is the most disappointing part of all. With that said, guys, let me know your thoughts. Is OP the a-hole? Is she not the a-hole? And what would you do in a situation like this? And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's in our slash I don't work here, lady, where a psycho Karen attacks OP to teach her a lesson and the dude ends up regretting it. It's such a crazy story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.